I bid you peace and grace in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. We begin with our collective welcoming. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children in the name of your child, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the 18th year of Nebuchadrezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Hanimal, son of your uncle, Shalom, is going to come to you and say, buy my field that is at Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanimal came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of the Lord and said to me, buy my field that is at Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. For the right of possession, the redemption is yours. 
buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord, and I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of the purchase containing the terms and conditions and the open copy, and I gave the deed of the purchase to Barach, son of Neriah, son of Messiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witness who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting at the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Barish, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for this Sunday, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6 and 14 through 16. We'll read them together responsibly by half verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he shall say to the Lord, He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter. He shall cover you with his pinions and you shall. He shall not be afraid of any terror by night. Of the plague that stalks in the darkness. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. With long life, I will satisfy him. A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. Of course, there is a great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But we have food and clothing. We will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you were made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes to the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. and Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Please be seated. Once you imagine an, an eight-year-old Father Marshall, pre-father thing, I was this little kid who uh, was living in upstate western New York with my mom and my sister. She was teaching at Geneseo State University of New York. And in Geneseo, there was this lovely, old-fashioned western New York library, public library. It was an old schoolhouse. And you walked in and there was a big, huge gallery room full of books and the smell of books and the smell of library. You know, that's that really good old fashioned smell of library. And uh, there was a great children's section. I adored it. Lib and I both, my sister and I both were very much into books from the time we were little up until even now. And they had this great little turret room way up in the top. And the thing about my mom is that there was never a limit on the number of books you could take out of the library. There was just the idea of abandon in books was, was installed in us, particularly when you could just borrow them and bring them back. The other thing is she would deduct from our allowance if we were had any late fees. So we had to be very good about that. But in any event, I was fascinated by all these books. And one of my favorite books was an illustrated Greek mythology book. It was this um, beautiful piece of, of artwork as well as the literature. I would take it up into that little turret room and I would read it. And I learned a lot about Greek mythology. And I'm telling you this because if you were into Greek mythology, which of course I assume you all are, right? Yeah, absolutely. You have your copy of Bullfinches at home. You'll go reference that later. Yeah, that's, that's the big college book, by the way, the one like this, not the little thin one with the illustrations, but the big thick one with all of the different stories. In. The essence of Greek mythology is this. The Greeks told myths that were fanciful stories that were true. Not true that they happened, but true that they spoke to the human experience and the struggle of human beings with the absoluteness and also the fickle nature of the gods. Human hubris was always the object lesson. Human pride was always the object lesson to, dis, to be dispelled or to be challenged. So if you hear about Sisyphus, who was tasked with rolling a stone up a hill that always rolled back down when he died because he could never quite finish the task before him because he was such a bad person in life, or Tantalus, who we get the word tantalized from, where he was such a glutton in life that when he died, he was placed in a stream that every time he got thirsty and bent down, the water would recede, or there were beautiful succulent fruit that would hang above his head. And every time he reached up, the branches would withdraw. You're starting to get the sense of things, right? In Hades, in the land of the dead, everything is fixed and fixed on the negatives of our lives. In other words, if we have too much good, and we take too much, 
to the disadvantage and dis, dis, and dis, uh, dis, and dis-ease of others, then we are responsible for that in the life to come or in the death to come, if you will, if you're Greek. Jesus in Luke is speaking to the Greeks. He's speaking to those who understand their myths. And when he talks about the rich man being tormented in Hades, all of the people who are Greek speakers in his audience, and even some of the folks who are Jewish, who were trained in Greek culture, will go, ah, I recognize that place. This is not hell, mind you. This is not hell. Hell is a different concept. We're not there. Where we are is Hades, where in the land of the dead, as I said, everything is fixed. Though it be the land of shadows, that which has been in this life that we are living now that isn't right becomes fixed. So, dis so disappointing and so disheartening is this story, I love this, that in the days to come as people would study this scripture, there was a rich man clothed in purple and fine linen who feasted sumptuously at his banquet hall every day. They were so upset that Lazarus got a name and the rich man didn't. They actually named the rich man. Did you know that? The story itself is called uh, classically of Lazarus and Dives. Dives is the Greek word for rich person. They're so upset that this rich person has no name, they name him. Because he should have a name, shouldn't he? Yeah, see, I'm, what you can't see out there in the world is I can see all the faces going, hmm, good point, yeah. No, no, not actually. Abraham gets a name, Lazarus gets a name. They get to cuddle in the afterlife, but Dives, the rich man who is being tormented in Hades, he doesn't get a name. But the point of the story is, and it's important for us to understand it, Jesus is telling an object lesson to us about the difference between this life and death. You see, in death, things become fixed. Thanatos and stasis, stasis, these are analogies. These are, these are similitudes. They mean the same thing. There is no change in death. Jesus is telling everyone. So if you can make change now, that is the time. Kind of like Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. Some of you had already jumped there. I'll just go with you right now, right? Marley shows up to Ebenezer Scrooge on Christmas Eve and says, Scrooge, I'm going to give you a chance, a chance I didn't take in my life. And I am dragging all these chains, which all the injustices and misdeeds and indulgences of my life, I am condemned to drag them around the earth, witnessing all of the missed opportunities I had. And you know what, Scrooge? I'm going to give you those opportunities. And Scrooge responds, please don't do me any favors. Three ghosts will visit you, ghosts of Christmas past, ghosts, ghosts of Christmas present, and ghosts of of Christmas is yet to come. And you know the story, but I'm gonna dial in on something. The ghost of Christmas present, at a certain point, Scrooge, who is starting to experience a change of heart, is confronted in an underpass in some cold, dark corner of London by a family that is trying to share a single spoiled potato over an open fire, and that is their Christmas feast. And Scrooge takes exception to this and says, why doesn't somebody help them? And the ghost of Christmas present quotes back to him, are there not workhouses? Are there not debtors' prisons and orphanages? Isn't there a social net that can catch these people? And Scrooge knows that he is being confronted with his own fixed opinions about those who have and those who have not. And then he is confronted by what is beneath the ghost of Christmas presents robe, which are two horrid little creatures, orphans that are emaciated and covered in sores and are horrid and terrifying to look at. And they are frightening because they're angry and hissing. And the ghost of Christmas presents says, these are need and want. 
and they are always with humanity. So you see the challenge that Jesus is placing before us and before the Greeks, that need and want are with us. They happen to be named in Jesus' story, Lazarus, and they're not quite so repulsive. In fact, we would much rather hang out with Lazarus and the dogs because we know that the outcome for him is a heck of a lot more favorable than it is for the rich man who is deprived of a name. But what Jesus' object lesson is to us is while you are here, while it is now, while you are in this present moment, this is the moment to make the choices that will prove the tensile strength of the kingdom of God. This is the time for you to act with mercy and generosity and grace and love. This is the time for you to embrace the other. Oftentimes, the other, the one who is sitting literally right at your doorstep, hoping for crumbs from your table. And to have the opportunity to walk in grace is to make the choices that are presented to us now that will quicken that set of relationships. Perhaps if the rich man had done so in his day in that story, he would have received a name. Instead, he received, if you will, the mythological reward of Hades and having his fate fixed. But this is the good news today, brothers and sisters. Our fate is not fixed. Not only are we given the present moment to make choices with regard to how we celebrate that we are given more than enough in this life that we can share, but also that we are given the opportunity to care for and make provision for all those in need as community, as individuals, as church, as the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, we also celebrate and mark the fact that Christ in his dying and rising has shattered not only the gates of hell, but also the concretization of all of that muck of human hubris that is Hades. We are no longer fixed in space and time when all of our choices are done. Instead, if we choose to live in Christ in this moment, then we will live in Christ in all time and beyond time yet to come. So in one way, I have this image for you of an eight-year-old boy who was sitting there reading his illustrated Greek mythology and pondering at the great Sisyphean. I like that. You like that word? You can use that later at a cocktail party. The great Sisyphean dilemmas of human existence. I know it's twisted. I was an eight-year-old who understood what Sisyphean was. It's, that's another sermon at another time and an object lesson in having a parent who's a professor of education. But to understand that that is contrasted, maybe complemented is the better word for what I am today. Yesterday, Laura and I, as we were getting ready to go do a funeral up in Madison, stopped off at Community of Hope Ministries and Alice's Cups Stuff the Bus event at ShopRite. And we had an opportunity to go shopping in ShopRite. Thank you, Jeannie, for that $100. We matched it. We were given a donation. We went, used those cards that were donated to us and some more, and we took money to the bus. By the way, we did stuff it. Hooray. But that's not actually the point I'm making. The point I'm making is all of the people who were walking into ShopRite as we were leaving, holding the flyer, which was their shopping list of the items needed by our food pantry. People who had just come to the store that day to do their weekly shopping were adding more to their list so they could care for the other. There were no nameless rich folk that day at ShopRite. There are no nameless rich folk in this church today. And we all, because we have more than enough, stand with Lazarus and offer ourselves as witness to that in this moment, there can be change. In this moment, we can feed the hungry and care for those in need because we have more than enough. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand now and join me in a testimony of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us set our hope on God and pray to our God, saying, God, our refuge and stronghold, we put our trust in you. We pray for your one holy Catholic and apostolic church. May we and your whole church pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. God, our refuge and stronghold. We pray for the leaders of this and every nation. Remind us that they are fallible human beings, fellow children of the earth. May they put their trust in you, even as we trust in you for our help. God, our refuge and stronghold. Creating God, you made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Make us good stewards of your bounty, that there may be food enough for all who hunger. God, our refuge and stronghold. Open our eyes to see the poor at our gates. Give us compassion for those suffering in our community. You, O oh Lord, care for the stranger. You sustain the orphan and widow. May our work reflect your heart. God, our refuge and stronghold. We pray for the hungry, the sick and the dying. Grant comfort and mercy to those who now experience evil things. Please add your own petitions. God, our refuge and stronghold. We pray for those who have died. May all the departed find new life in the presence of their God, the one who alone has immortality and dwells in unexpected in unapproachable light. God, our refuge and stronghold. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul, and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, 
Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Ann, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Betty, Guy, Pete, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Eddie, George, Tom, AJ, Brandon, Gail, Lisa, Teddy, George, Carol, the O'Donnell family, Marge, Peter, Rosemary, George, Ethel, and James. We remember as well in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the Anglican Church of Burundi. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the Commission on Congregational Development. We give thanks for those selling, celebrating birthdays this week, especially Rosalie and Angie. And we remember those making anniversaries this week, especially Deb and Andrew, Laura and Kirk, Maureen and Tom, and Bev and Ron. We remember those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Austin, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. Today's altar flowers are given in the glory of God in memory of Conchita Martinez by Rosita and John Hamilton. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Confirmation classes for our youth started last Wednesday. Uh, we are doing a five-week series on the baptismal covenant. And uh, if you're interested in having your young one attend, please speak to me after the service. I'll make sure we get them all caught up and prepared. This is a hybrid class that will be offered both in person and also online, and all as well in terms of being ready to be presented to the bishop on the 20th. I've had several people request to be presented to the bishop as adults for confirmation reception or reaffirmation of baptismal vows. And come uh, probably uh, mid-October, I'm gonna start a series that will uh, fall right after the 10 a.m. service and will be uh, online only. Um, so you'll be able to zoom in on that and we'll get that set up. So if you're interested in participating and uh, being presented to the bishop on November 20th to be received and uh, to become a part of the Episcopal Church or to extend that sense of mindfulness and intention in your walk with Christ in a reaffirmation of your baptismal vows, we'll give you an update on that probably next week so you can get involved as well. Um, men's breakfast is this coming Saturday. It is the 1st of October and looking forward to that. We will be at the Colonial Diner at 8.30 in the morning on Saturday. Please do join us. We are together for fellowship, conversation, breakfast, a little bit of prayer and the opportunity to be together as the people of St. Peter's. The following week, the second, second Saturday will be the women's breakfast. We look forward to that. This coming Sunday, is St. Francis Sunday. Very excited on a couple of levels. The first is we welcome the pets of the church, the animal companions to come to church on that day. Join us. 
Uh, we look forward to having them and uh, welcoming them as guests. We will be blessing animals at both the eight o'clock and the 10 o'clock service. As well, we do a pet food drive um, that will help out the local Old Bridge Animal Shelter. Um, we take in bags of food, small bags and small cans of food will also distribute to Alice's Cup as well. One of the things that people who come to pantries often ask for but yet do not find is pet food and small bags and small cans are also a great way for us to support them as well. So both and. So if you give us a 40 pound bag of dog food from Costco, we'll say yes to that. I've got the truck, I'll load it in, take it over there after the service. And if you show up with a few bags of cat food that are small and manageable from ShopRite, that's good too. Speaking of ShopRite, if you're going there, Luann, you got some cards? She'll have them after the service, um, but we have cards available to you. Thank you to everyone who bought cards and either donated them or used them yesterday. So to give you an update, we did stuff the bus the storage room at Alice's Cup is literally full to the gills. You'll see pictures of that on Tuesday when we send out a little photo essay of that effort with the E! News, um, but really a great effort. I wanna thank our board members and our volunteers who were there from 10 to two yesterday. They filled an entire big bus from Raphael. Uh, thank you, Sandy Donaldson, for obtaining that bus for us on loan. And on top of that, we raised almost $900 in ShopRite cards. Um, so Jeannie, you're gonna have some, uh, some ShopRite cards to spend money on for the supper and for uh, the, uh, the on-site on mini mark. Um, please do be aware that in the, our website, the annual campaign stewardship program is now available. That website, uh, the website is updated. The page is there. It's the first one. As you look at the banner, you can click on that, learn more about things. There are weekly meditations on the scriptures, including this week, but also going back a couple of weeks. On top of that, they'll run through the end of the campaign. And of course, we're going to bring the rest of the site online. This week, if you haven't already, you'll be getting a letter from me that will kick off our campaign. We are speaking to wisdom, works, and wealth. So the first one from the rector will be wisdom. The second one from Maureen will be on the works of the parish. And the third one will be about meditating on your commitment to the coming year for our mission and ministry. We appreciate your support. We're glad you're with us on that. You'll learn more. Speaking of wisdom, you would love to grow in wisdom, wouldn't you? Everyone does. We're looking for readers, lectors, like Paul just did. We're looking for chalice bears. We're looking for ushers. And we're also looking for members of the Altar Guild. If you're interested in any of those venues, please speak to me after the service. We'll get you trained up and ready. Deeply appreciate everybody who's stepping up as we return to a regular schedule in this endemic stage of the COVID-19 outbreak. It's time for us to staff up so that we can reach out. So appreciate your support in that. And of course, just to remind you, we have a tower room that is always receptive of donations for Alice's Cup and also our Mini Mart food pantry. Um, I know very few churches that support two food pantries. We have one on site and we have one we administer on behalf of the Churches United for People here in Spotswood up at Alice's Cup and we keep them both full. I appreciate all your efforts in that regard. This is a beautiful day the Lord has made, even though we're anticipating a bit of rain, and we will continue to pray for Rutgers after their rather disappointing Big Ten debut, but we know they're a team with heart and grace, and they will keep striving forward. And though there may be Mets fans and Boston fans here in the congregation, I think we can all offer up a prayer for Aaron Judge that he make his uh, 61 hits. Can we, yeah, we can lift that one up. Yes, Betty. Actually, I have to keep them open because we need the air circulation because of COVID-19. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, we do have to maintain that, that breeze. I apologize. But we may turn on the heat next week for sure. So offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Please rise. And also know that all are welcome at our table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify your Father and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Te aclamamos, Santo Señor, glorioso en el poder. Tus grandes obras revelan tu sabiduría y amor. Nos formaste a tu propia imagen. Encomendándonos al mundo entero para que en obediencia a ti, nuestro Creador, pudiéramos regir y servir a todas tus criaturas. Cuando por desobediencia nos alejamos de ti, no nos abandonaste, abandonaste al poder de la muerte. En tu misericordia viniste en nuestra ayuda para que buscándote te encontráramos. Una y otra vez nos llamaron al pacto contigo y por los profetas nos enseñaste la esperanza de la salvación. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy, and to fulfill your purpose. He gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. Y a fin de que no vivisemos pa, más para nosotros mismos, sino para él que por nosotros murió y resucitó, envió al Espíritu Santo como su primicia, primicia a los creen para completar su obra en el mundo y llevar la, a, plen, a plenitud la sanctificación de todos. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Señor, te rogamos que en tu bondad y misericordia tu Espíritu Santo descienda sobre nosotros y sobre estos dones, santificándolos y mostrando que son dones santos para tu pueblo santo, el pan de vida y la copa de salvación, el cuerpo y la, la sangre de tu, yehu, de, de tu Hijo Jesucristo. Concede que todos los que compartan este pan y este cáliz sean un solo cuerpo y un solo espíritu, un sacrificio vivo en Cristo para alabanza de nuestro, de, de vuestro nombre. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Peter, our patron, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. 
We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now in the language of our heart, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The gold chalice is for intinction, the silver for sipping. All are welcome. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members 
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be God's hands and hearts in this world in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. La sabiduría de Dios, el amor de Dios y la gracia de Dios fortalecerte para ser los manos en el corazón de Cristo en este mundo. En nombre de la Santa Sima Trinidad. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thank you. 
You, you, 